Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game the video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and we've got a very fun two card combo deck in store for you today featuring the one mana enchantment aura from Jumpstart, Curiosity, which enchants a creature and whenever enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, we may draw a card. Now Curiosity doesn't specifically say combat damage, so if our creature can deal damage in any other way, we still get to potentially draw a card. And that means Curiosity forms a two card combo with Niv Mizzet Paroon, the six mana 5-5 five five legendary dragon wizard with flying that cannot be countered and says whenever we draw a card, Niv Mizzet deals a one damage to any target and whenever any player casts an instant or sorcery spell we also get to draw a card and in turn niv Mizzet will deal one damage to any target. So if we put Curiosity on our niv Mizzet Paroon and we draw a card or any player casts an instant or sorcery which in turn will draw us a card, niv Mizzet will deal one damage. So if we deal one damage to the opponent, Curiosity will trigger, once again niv Mizzet will trigger and we can essentially deal infinite damage although it is limited by how many cards we have remaining in our deck of course, if we end up decking before the opponent's dead, then we will lose the game, but Curiosity is a May ability, so it's not like we have to combo off entirely. But uh, that's the basic idea of our deck, put a Curiosity on niv Mizzet, hopefully have one mana left over to cast a cheap instant or sorcery, so we can trigger niv Mizzet right away and win the game on the spot, otherwise we will win the game on our next draw step. And then we also have an additional creature in the deck, so we don't get stranded with Curiosity in our hand without a creature to enchant. And that is Thermo Alchemist, the 2 mana 03 human shaman with defender. And we can tap Thermo Alchemist to deal 1 damage to each opponent. And whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we also get to untap Thermo Alchemist. So if we put our Curiosity on our Thermo Alchemist, we can also draw a card each turn by tapping the Alchemist. And if we can cast any instants or sorceries, we get to potentially draw multiple cards per turn. So the Alchemist is a nice backup plan to get some value from our curiosity until we can eventually assemble the combo with niv Mizzet, which can also just win the game by himself. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana besides our four copies of Curiosity, we also have the full playset of Opt as a cheap instant that can enable our Thermo Alchemist and Niv-Mizzet and can help us look for the missing combo pieces. And then we also have the full playset of Shock as a cheap burn spell to take out any cheap creatures from the opponent. At two mana, we also have two copies of Fire Prophecy, deals three damage to a creature. And then we can also put a card from our hand onto the bottom of our library. And if we do draw a card, so another way to potentially help us assemble the combo. And then our four copies of Thermo Alchemist, which can also burn out the opponent as a backup plan. And two copies of Thrill of Possibility. We have to discard a card as an additional cost, and then we get to draw two. And then at three mana, we've got the full playset of Flame Sweep as our sweeper of choice. Great against the Goblins deck, dealing two damage to each creature except for creatures we control with flying. So it also doesn't kill any of our own creatures. And then four copies of Sarkhan Fireblood, which does a lot of different things in this deck. We can use the first plus one to discard a card, and if we do draw a card, so we can get rid of any combo pieces we don't need. Maybe it's a matchup where Flame Sweep and Shock aren't particularly great, and we just discard them instead. Then the second plus ability adds two mana in any combination of colors to spend on dragon spells, so this can help us ramp into a turn for niv Mizzet. And then the minus seven ultimate ability creates four 5-5 five five red dragon creature tokens with flying, which can also win the game. And then at 4 mana we also have the full playset of Pirate Spillage as another looting effect. As an additional cost we have to discard a card, and then we get to draw two cards and create two treasure tokens. So this can also help us ramp towards niv Mizzet, so we have enough mana to potentially play niv Mizzet, play the Curiosity and cast a 1 mana instant or sorcery in the same turn to completely combo off, and another way to assemble the combo pieces in the first place. And then our full playset of a Niv-Mizzet, despite being 6 mana, we've got plenty of ways to either ramp into it or discard it if we draw multiples. And then going over the mana base, we've got 24 lands, 5 islands, 7 mountains, 4 steam vents, 4 sulfur falls, and 4 temple of epiphany. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a bit of a clunky hand, but we do have double temple to maybe look for a looting effect to discard one of Mizzets. So I'll try it. And then Flame Sweep to make sure we don't get run over. Can keep an opt since we can cast it alongside playing the Temple. Could also play the Alchemist right away, but I think I should prioritize finding a looting effect first. There's a Pirate Spillage, so we'll keep that and then opt. 
can be uh, saved for later. Facing a blue-red deck. Turn to Reunion, discarding a land and a Radical Idea. So it could be some sort of Arclight Phoenix deck. For now we'll just play the Alchemists. And then Opt can try and find another land. Yeah, let's opt now, even though I miss out on an Alchemist trigger. I don't think it matters too much. Keep Islands. And hope they don't have any counter spells here. Don't think Flame Sweep is going to be particularly great here. There's Sarkon to ramp me into niv -Mizzet. So all we're missing is Curiosity. Thirst for meaning from the opponents. So they must be playing some enchantments. Another Cathartic Reunion, discarding Double Thrill. Opponents seeing a lot of cards. Maybe trying to assemble their own two-card combo, although I'm not sure which one. Chart Course. Once again, draw to discard. Discards an island, so they're not giving up any information about their combo. Um, I guess I'll play the Temple first. See if we can scry towards Curiosity, so we can win next turn. Told me I do and this. get rid of a shock in case niv dies. I want a backup. So will we get to see our opponent's combo in action? Nope, another charter course. Discards a lands. Reunion. Oh, there we go. Discards double Storm Herald. So a Storm Herald combo deck, although we haven't seen any enchantments hit the graveyard yet. But they might be playing the one that gives plus 20 plus 20 alongside Fling for the one hit KO. Alright, so I could just loot with Sarkon to see if we can find Curiosity and still have enough mana to win. Don't need this Thermal Alchemists. Flame Sweep, not quite. Alright, we'll just play Nif then. And that can also win the game in a few attacks. And now if the opponent casts their cantrips, we'll get to draw a card as well. A radical idea discarding classification, so now we finally see the enchantments. So if they play Storm Herald, I can respond to the trigger with a shock before they get the enchantment on it. So they won't be able to fling me to death. So this might be hmm, interesting. One mana, I guess it could be Thud instead of Fling. So let me go full control just to make sure I get to respond to this trigger. Because once the classification is on the Storm Heralds, I'm in trouble. So Storm Herald's gone. Still no Curiosity. Although they only have the one Storm Herald left 
Although presumably they have it in hand if they discarded two of them. But another Fire Prophecy has got that covered. Can we find Curiosity to end the game right now? Doubt my methods. Not quite. Can always cast a Flame Sweep, I guess, just as a cantrip, but I'll keep it in hand as another answer for Storm Herald just in case. Since we'll be able to win the game next turn, so might as well uh, just keep up interaction. But that's also the beauty of a combo deck, if that can win without a combo. We're just playing reasonable cards with a bit of synergy in between them. So even if we don't draw Curiosity, our deck is still capable of winning, which is not something you can say for the Colossification Storm Herald deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, a bit of interaction, some looting effects to get rid of my burn spells if they're not good in the matchup. Let's see what our opponent is working with. A Temple of Malady, so maybe some sort of green ramp deck. Let's play Mountain and then end of turn I can thrill. Alright, never mind. Wild Growth Walker. Fine target for Fire Prophecy. So I guess I'll get rid of the Flame Sweep then. Sample find Sarkon, seems perfect with Niv in hand. So is there any reason to Thrill? Maybe Thrill discarding Pillage, since I now have Sarkon to ramp me into Niv and I don't need uh, two treasures. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And then keep the Opt as a cheap cantrip to trigger Niv in case we find Curiosity. Let us fight. Bolas told me I should do this. Sarkon should be able to survive this attack. And next turn we can play Niv Mizzets. It's like we're back in the old standard when uh, Ixalan was still there. Wayward Surtooth. So this might be a Bolas a Citadel deck. Using Wild Growth Walker for life gain to offset the life loss from Citadel and then Surtooth and other various creatures to let them play additional lands. So if I top deck Curiosity I still wouldn't be able to combo since I'll be one mana short. So maybe I should cast Opt now. Now we'll keep it to trigger Niv. And there's a shock. Look to the skies. Opponent's got seven permanents in play, so I don't have to shock the ranger just yet. Even if they play two lands, they won't have the city's blessing yet. Otherwise, I might want to shock the ranger so the sword tooth can't attack. gonna be Dryads. Alright, so now I'll probably shock the Ranger. Could also opt, because I'll draw two cards, which will also kill the Ranger. I guess that's fair. And then look for Curiosity. And a Wild Growth Walker. So let's probably deal one to the walker. I mean, could also try and take out Dryad of Elysian Grove here. Got some options. Let's deal one to the Wild Growth Walker. I'll loot with Sarkon. I don't need this. I need this. 
And then I think I'm gonna play another Sarkon and loot again. Maybe I should be playing Temple first, because if I find Curiosity, it's just game over. Keep the Opts. Although, keeping the Opt means we won't be able to combo off this turn, even if we find Curiosity. And then I'll just opt now. And that alongside Shock can take out the Dryad. Alright, so we've drawn a few extra cards, although mostly lands. And there's a Bolas of Citadel. Second Citadel at the cost of 6 life. Does briefly give them the city's blessing for Surtooth. So they can kill Sarkon, but without a Wild Growth Walker in play to gain life, our opponent's just dead to my niv Mizzet attacking. Alright, sweet. So didn't quite assemble the combo, but uh, dealt enough damage and killed enough creatures to prevent my opponent from going off. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand, especially if we can find a niv Mizzet soon. Some interaction for creatures. Ways of discarding those cards if they're not useful. Which is definitely an important part of building your deck in best of one. If you put it full of spot removal spells as a control deck and your opponent doesn't have that many creatures, your deck doesn't look all that great. Let's kill the Sprite Dragon and then... Yeah, I'll probably get rid of the Thrill since we have Sarkon instead. Keep the flame sweep as more interaction. We begin. Yes. And I'll keep the Temple of Epiphany, still lets me play flame sweep. It's gonna be another Sprite Dragon, plus maybe a Shock to take out Sarkon. Pillar of Flame instead. Alright, Sarkon down. But Flame Sweep can still catch the Sprite Dragon before it gets too large. And then we've got the Alchemist plus Curiosity combo, which is kinda neat. Yeah, we'll keep the Opts. And then the plan is next turn play Alchemist, hope they don't have a Lightning Strike. And then I can play Maybe double curiosity even, and an opt in the same turn and draw a million cards. It's gonna be winged words to draw two. Right, let's hope this thermal alchemist survives, because we've got a lot riding on it. Now if my opponent keeps up. A bunch of mana, it's gonna be kinda risky to go for it here. Plays Enigma Drake. If they have double shock, they punish me pretty badly. But I think it's still worth it. It's gonna be a lofty denial instead. Okay. That's fine. So we get to play the second Curiosity. Draw a card. Flame Sweep. Not super useful here, so we'll just opt. See if we can find another cheap instance. Perfect. Don't need a second alchemist, still looking for Niv. Alright, that wasn't a bad turn. 
Now the alchemist is probably not going to survive another turn cycle. But at least we got our value. Another winged words. Enigma Drake up to a 6-4 in the meantime. They might have another Lofty Denial in hand. So, if they didn't have any counter spells, double Flame Sweep would take care of the Drake. They probably let the first Flame Sweep resolve, but it does draw me an extra card with Alchemists. I guess we'll draw first and see what we can find. Another Alchemists. Yeah, let's double Flame Sweep. Still draws me some extra cards. And if they counter the first flame sweep, we can still do something else. So, flame sweep would also kill my own alchemist here, I guess, is the issue. But I think. I think, let's see, am I happy with that exchange? I'll still get one more activation before the alchemist dies. Hmm, maybe I just play Sarkon here instead. Sure. Can absorb some damage from the Enigma Drake if it resolves. Alright, it does bait out Lofty Denial. Not sure if my opponent would have countered the Flame Sweep is the thing because they might have been happy to get rid of my alchemist. Terramander, which they can adapt for one mana. And there's Nif, but is it too little too late? Because, yeah, we don't have the curiosity on Nif himself, so we won't necessarily be able to combo here. Playing Niv at least keeps me alive. That resolves. And we'll pass a turn. If our opponent adapts, I can use the Alchemist to draw cards, ping the Termander with Niv, force them to spend one more mana on adapting. It's not super relevant here, but... I might as well make him do it. They can adapt in response, but maybe your opponent doesn't know that. And wow, they let the Terramander go. You can adapt a second time as long as the creature doesn't have any counters on it. So they would have been fine just adapting again for one mana. So, glad we played it this way. And I could deal one to the Drake. Now we'll go face. I think I'm happy trading Nif for the Drake here. Of course, we would be dead if we take it. The only reason to deal damage to the Drake is if my opponent casts more instants and we eventually draw into a shock to take out the Drake, but I'll let the trade happen and now we're on the Alchemist's damage plan essentially. Start here. Another Curiosity. Pillage can discard Temple, and then I can play double Alchemists. Is that too greedy to go to 5 here against a deck with Pillar of Flame and Sprite Dragons? Maybe it is. So let's Temple first, look for another cheap instant or sorcery, or Niv. And then we can Pillage, discarding Steam Vents. This might get countered, although we can pay for Lofty Denial this time. It's only one mana. And 
then might as well ping again. And my opponent scoops it up. All right, I'm glad we got to see the Alchemist Curiosity plan in action. Yeah, I wonder what would have happened if my opponent did adapt to Terramander a second time. They would have hit me for five down to two, so if they had a Pillar of Flame in hand, I would have been dead. But uh, yeah, close game nonetheless. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Reasonable hands. Bit of interaction and some draw effects. Also, no Sarkon, Niv or Curiosity to work with right away. So we'll have to change our game plan dynamically. I'll keep us all for falls. Facing Steam Vents. And Aether Spellbomb, so maybe an Underworld Breach deck. Not sure which variety yet. I do have some answers for creatures like Emery or Lurus. But I can probably get rid of one of my burn spells with a thrill. We're not playing any counter spells, so we can be soft against spell-based combo decks that are faster than us. Thinking of the Underworld Breach deck. Thinking of the uh, Song of Creation deck. So those are definitely matchups we would rather not face. Let's play another temple for now. And if we definitely keep. Don't have a way to ramp into it, no Pirate Spillage or Sarkon. Fibble Thip resolves. And we'll just play an opt for now. Draw Niv. Just wanted to spend my mana there. I could opt main phase to try and hit Sarkon. It's probably fine. And we hit Sarkon. I'll discard one shock. In case opponent plays another small creature that dies to the flame sweep. And next turn we can go Niv plus Shock potentially. Chances of my opponent comboing off entirely. Not impossible, I guess, but chances aren't too high. There's Lurus, so Flame Sweep looks good. Also, Niv plus Shock also works, I guess. And if my opponent has a spell pierce, that doesn't necessarily do it. Because that will trigger Niv. They can bounce Niv with spell bomb, but the shock still kills Lurus, which is what matters. So let's add two mana. Are you ready? They could also bounce their own lures with a spell bomb, which is maybe what they'll do. So it's possible the perfect timing was to wait until their upkeep. Pwn plays Witching Well. So we're really just missing the curiosity to combo off. This is probably a matchup where I do need to assemble the combo to be fast enough. Attacking with Nif four times might not get there in time. Backup Lurus gets back Spellbomb. And Spellbomb's not a bad answer to my Nif Mizzets since it doesn't uh, trigger it and can still delay it for a turn. And there's Curiosity, so can I combo this turn? Niv makes two mana. Yeah, I'm one mana short. If Fire Prophecy was Shock, I would have been able to do it. Definitely still gonna play Niv. 
So I guess that means I just go Niv into Fire Prophecy Dolores. They can use Spell Bomb again. And then next turn I'll still be short on the combo since I need uh, three mana for Flame Sweep when I'll have two. But then again, my opponent keeping up Spell Bomb can disrupt my combo at any time. So I think we're just fine with uh, that situation. Might demands power. Now it's also possible I should have been waiting for my opponent to use a spell bomb on my Niv to cast a prophecy, so I get one additional damage from Niv to take out Fibblethip, so they can make mana with a Mox Amber. Although there's a chance that my opponent just doesn't use the spell bomb. But that's definitely worth considering there. And an Emery. Alright, so Flame Sweep is looking good. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have Underworld Breach in hand. If it wasn't for the Spell Bomb in play, we would be able to combo off. Because we have Curiosity plus Shock to trigger Niv. But I think now the play is Niv and then play Flame Sweep. They are coming. And I definitely can't afford to wait now, otherwise we give them the opportunity to use Emery if we let them untap. I guess we'll move to combat here. But yeah, let's uh, Flame Sweep now. Spell bomb bounces Nif. They could have also decided to bounce Emery, but that makes sense. All right, opponent's got three cards in hand. No excavators, but if they have a breach in hand, we could still be in trouble. Yep, and there's a breach. So now what? They need to try and find an excavator so they can keep milling themselves. They maybe play Emery to try mill it. Plays a spell bomb instead. They can play Lurus as well. And then Lurus can get back a spell bomb for value. Or they can play one mana Emery now. So I guess making the spell bomb first to reduce the cost on Emery makes sense. Although they don't have a million cards in graveyard anymore. There's Excavator, so now they can play Excavator. Although no second Mox Amber to keep looping. All right, they had one in hand. So now double Mox Hammer plus Excavator means they can keep fueling the Breach, although it's not infinite yet, because they only have the one Excavator in play. So they're still eventually going to run out of cards in Graveyard. But if they find another excavator soon, we might be in trouble. They also kept that Thassa's Oracle in the graveyard still as their win condition to eventually play out of the graveyard with all the blue mana from the Mox Amber. So yeah, from an empty board, our opponent can almost set up the win here, which is impressive. Opponent sacrifices a spell bomb to put an extra card in the graveyard for escape.
Mills for two, finds another breach. That's not super helpful. So they've got triple Mox Amber, but only the one Excavator. And the opponent passes the turn with Excavator and Emery in play, and not a very full graveyard. Alright, can I finally combo? I think so. Come to me. Play Niv. Play Curiosity. Shock the Emery, doesn't matter. And we're off to the races. 35 cards in library, which is enough to deal lethal here. Now the combo does take a few clicks to go through here, since Curiosity is a May ability. But our opponent sees what's happening and concedes. Alright, that was a close one. Lots of interaction. Opponent tried to go for their combo, but didn't quite get there. And then we were finally able to assemble it without a spell bomb interfering. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Reasonable hands. Bit of interaction, bit of card selection, and a Nif to work towards. Facing Soul Warden. We've got Shock at the ready. I can Shock a Pride Mate in response to the life gain trigger. Instead it's going to be a Bishop of Wings, so this is the Angel version. I think I'll let the Soul Warden live. Keep Shock to maybe kill the 3-mana uh, 2-2 two -two Angel of Vitality. Fire Prophecy can take out Resplendent Angel. And wow, opponents would have had the combo here. Turn 3 Resplendent Angel, making an additional Angel token. Luckily we can take it out. And one Nif can go. Now our opponent still gains all that life, so now an Angel of Vitality will survive Shock. Let's play the Alchemists. It's going to be a Speaker of the Heaven, which we can shock as well. Yeah, I don't think Soul Warden's a very high priority out of the Angel deck, at least in this matchup. So I can untap first to get an extra Alchemist trigger, although it's going to be kind of tricky here against the Life Gain deck. We have to be careful that we have enough cards remaining in Library to burn the opponent out with a combo, so... Ooh, Flame Sweep. That's a nice one. So we'll clean up the entire board here. Luckily we can still respond with the Alchemist trigger on the stack with an Alchemist activation. So it's difficult to forget an Alchemist trigger. Now if my opponent plays one of their big 4-5 mana angels, we could still be in trouble. Although we are getting closer to niv -Mizzets. Another Speaker of the Heavens. Alright. Let's see if we can opt into another answer for Speaker. Another Nif will bottom. Curiosity. Interesting. I think I'll just pass here and then keep the Curiosity to go on Nif. The Angel deck doesn't really play a ton of removal. And then we can just put Curiosity on Nif to assemble the combo. I should have definitely activated Alchemist before my opponent got a chance to untap here. Because they'll still get the Angel token.
Go to Niven play. And next turn it's going to be a Curious Sniff. Another Angel. Another 4 life. Still have 46 cards in library, so there's still plenty to burn their opponent out. All right, and there we go. Opts. I guess Alchemist can speed up the process. And our opponent explodes. The combo was good enough to beat Angels. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. A reasonable hand, especially if we can find a Nif right away. Can maybe discard one Curiosity to Sarkon. Facing Lenor Elves, which we will shock. And hopefully we can untap with Sarkon. The beast will eventually take it out, but not before we get to activations. I know what I'm doing. Right, so ideally we draw Niv Mizzet next turn, otherwise we'll get to loot with Sarkon once again. You are Fire Prophecy doesn't quite deal with the Regisaur. Maybe I discard a Prophecy to Sarkon before I pillage. Although I guess if I find another Prophecy, I'll be happy, but there's only one left in the deck, so it's pretty unlikely. So yeah, I think I loot with Sarkon, discard Prophecy, and then pillage, if we don't find anything else. I'll show you unhinged. And then I'll discard the uh, Sample. Didn't find an Ivmizit, sadly. Your opponent on a black green great hench deck here, presumably. So that's a lot of pressure for them to put in play. Shock and deal with the 1 1 token, so Beast can't attack me at least. But I think the goal here should be to try and assemble the combo as soon as possible. So I think the play is Pillage, discarding Sarkon, and then I can still Shock afterwards. Yeah, and then keeping the Shock can also allow me to set up the combo next turn at instant speed. No Nif Mizzet just yet. I can Fire Prophecy the token. And get rid of this Sulfur Falls. This should at least stem the bleeding a little bit. Alchemist plus Curiosity also kind of nice, but might be too slow here. Nah, let's see if Temple... Can give me some good news. Another Sarkon. So I might have one or two more turns. If we just top deck Niv Mizzets, I do have enough mana to pull off the entire combo. If my opponent has another Lovestruck Beast or another 1 1 Lanner Elves, we are just dead on board. And they discarded Falmar Knight, so they must have another. 1-1 one, one here, although I guess I can shock it as their opponent uses order to get back Lanor Elves. But having to use the shock means I can combo off at instant speeds, so I might be forced to chum block with Niv, which is not where we want to be. But I guess it beats being dead on board. 
So last ditch effort here. No sword. Bolas told me I should do this. And just a lance. Alright, GG's. So we had the opportunity to potentially pull off the combo, but Niv Mizzet was nowhere to be found. And our opponent can attack for lethal here. We're empty handed. Alright. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Sadly, triple Niv without a looting effect is not gonna cut it. Alright, I can work with this. Probably get rid of one temple. And then this might be a hand where we want to find Curiosity to put on the Alchemists to undo our mulligan. Sarkon. I guess Sarkon means that drawing Niv is a lot more appealing. Sure. And if our opponent's playing some sort of ramp elf deck, they might not have a ton of ways to pressure my Sarkon right away. Especially once we play an 0-3 defender. There's elves. Alright, I probably got a fire prophecy to elves here. Otherwise my opponent could play a Nissa next turn. Yeah, let's not let that happen. So I can hit them for one, take out elves. And then I don't really want to get rid of anything here. Flame sweep another answer for another elf. Although it is true that my opponent didn't play a 2-mana Elf and they didn't have another Elf turn 1, so maybe they're out of Elves at this point. And getting rid of Flame Sweep was fine, but I can still discard it with Sarkon if that's the case. Uh, incubation Druid, so... Shock also an option. If I get really greedy, I could play Sarkon hoping to find a land and still Shock, but it doesn't seem worth the risk. So instead, let us probably just flame sweep, use the expensive spell. And then if I draw lands, I can play Sarkon and still shock next turn. Growing rights, but no creatures in place, so it's not going to transform anytime soon. Does find Paradise Root, now with that one we can shock right away. But we did find a land, so I do get to go Sarkon. I should probably have opted first. And then bottom the island, look for niv -Mizzets. And now I can discard the Steam Vents. It is nice that our deck can operate at 4 mana as long as we have Sarkon in play. Because I can cast all my spells and my niv -Mizzets, and there's niv -Mizzets. Alright, it's just going to be Paradise Druid for now, and Incubation Druids. And a Curiosity, alright, so next turn I have the combo assembled. Now how much damage can my opponent do here? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They could play an Ugin, that's the primary concern here. Although Ugin will have to minus 6 and then I can still shock it and the opponent will also lose all their stuff. So maybe it's still worth the risk. I will call the dragons. And uh, if they don't have anything too devastating we just win the game next turn. Alright, it's going to be a Nissa. That's fine. Six mana. And a Hydroid for four. Alright, so we should have it here.
Yeah, there's early burn spells to keep our opponent off balance. Buy us enough time to assemble the combo. And if we didn't have the shock in hand, just having a Sarkon in play also sets up the combo here. Since we can draw. And that will trigger Niv as well. <laughs> what madness! And there we go. Combo assembled. And my opponent concedes. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see some nice games with a deck in action. Some games we won with a combo, some games we won just by attacking with niv -Mizzet. some games we won by putting Curiosity on Thermo Alchemist, which is probably the most fun win condition in this deck, to be honest. Didn't face any goblins, weirdly enough, but I did face it in testing a few times, and while I won't claim it's a favorable matchup, it's definitely winnable, the combination of burn spells and flame sweeps with niv -Mizzet to quickly take over the game, even if we don't have the combo, is usually a good recipe. But of course, the Goblin deck can sometimes just play Moxus and win the game on the spot, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.